Hello, dear friends. Today we are going to have some fun with watercolors. If you ever felt a bit intimidated by this beautiful but sometimes unpredictable medium, this video will help you ease into watercolor painting. In this fun tutorial, we'll explore how to practice some basic watercolor techniques. We'll start with how to lay down a flat wash, ease into creating a graduated wash, and play around with some other core techniques using things you may find at home, like salt, rubbing alcohol, and plastic wrap, among other things. These are not just fun to do, but are things worth practicing when you are just starting out with watercolors. So let's demystify watercolor painting, shake off any doubts, and try to paint using watercolors together. Throughout this tutorial, you'll see my beloved dog Eddie, always playing or goofing around. Although he is almost 9 years old now, he still behaves like a puppy and is adored by my family and friends. Alright, let's jump straight into laying out a flat wash on dry paper. Some of you may know this as the wet on dry technique. Feel free to use any color you've got handy. I decided to use neutral tint and later indigo. Preparing enough color to cover your targeted area is key to this practice. Once you have enough color ready, load your brush with the pigment and start with a continuous stroke across the paper. Then quickly dip it back into your color, reload and apply the next stroke, slightly overlapping the bottom edge of one that you just laid down. Working swiftly is important here. If the previous stroke dries up, you might end up with those hard edges which we want to avoid for this exercise. Here I decided to show you how to apply the flat wash on a larger scale. This technique is one of the fundamental skills you need to harness in your watercolor journey. Be patient with yourself, it took me years to learn it, and I still get uneven washes from time to time, and this is okay. It's all about getting a feel of the paint, the brush, and how they interact with the paper. Moving on to the graduated wash technique, which can be a bit of a challenge, but is incredibly rewarding once you get the hang of it. This technique allows you to create beautiful gradient effect that can add depth and dimension to your paintings. I start by loading my brush with saturated paint, ensuring it's nice and full of pigment. After applying the first stroke, I dip just the tip of my brush into a jar of clean water. This partially dilutes the paint on my brush. Then I apply the next stroke with the slightly more diluted paint. I continue with the same order of gradually diluting the pigment on my brush, until my brush is almost free of color. It's a bit of practice to get that perfect gradient, but once you've got it, it's a game changer for your paintings. Give it a try. Here is the technique I use the most in my paintings. It is called variegated wash. This is where you layer different colors side by side so that they melt into each other. This technique is useful when you depict an atmospheric misty feel or lay the first washes in your paintings. We'll explore some fundamental wash techniques, but don't stop there. Feel free to experiment and mix them up in your own unique ways. Coming up, I'm going to walk you through layering and glazing. Watch closely as I lay down the initial wash. The transforming power of layering and glazing you may see at the end of this tutorial, as we need to give the first layer some time to completely dry. So stick around till the end of this video. Now let's create beautiful backgrounds, an effect that adds depth and texture to watercolor paintings. I'm using indigo for this example, as it is always eager to interact with the water. We start by applying a flat wash, just like we did in our first exercise. Once you have your wash down, take a liner brush or any brush that can hold a good amount of water. Load it with water and gently glide this brush over the still wet wash. Watch as the feathering effect or backgrounds appear, the result of the added water interacting with the initial layer of paint. This technique brings a dynamic and organic feel to your paintings, perfect for creating lively skies, water reflections, or just adding interesting textures. Watercolor painting offers limitless possibilities, and that's what makes it so captivating. There is something truly special about sitting down at your painting desk, brushes in hand, ready to play with watercolors, experimenting with the effects like backgrounds, washes, and creating various textures that come to mind. 
Next up, we are going to apply a variegated wash using wet on wet technique. Simply pre-wet the paper, load your brush with the color of your choice and gently apply the stroke onto wet paper. I'm using Indian yellow, then I apply red, then sap green, and at the end burnt umber for this example. The wet on wet technique allows colors to flow and blend into each other in the most natural and stunning ways. It isn't just a technique allowing the colors to flow, merge and create those gorgeous hazy effects right before your eyes. This approach is used for painting subjects that benefit from a gentle touch. Think soft billowing clouds, delicate flowers or distant landscapes where you want the details to blur into the horizon. Now we are ready to move on to an exciting part of this tutorial. From now on, we'll be exploring various techniques to create textures in watercolor. If you haven't already, hit pause, grab any salt you've got, and let's experiment together. And for you who wants to see the full list of things we use today, check out the comment section below, where I posted all of them for your convenience. Ok, for the salt technique, I've chosen two types, large pyramid salt for bold textures and fine sea salt for more subtle effects but you may use any salt you have handy today. I decided to pick ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson as my colors. Whether you are spreading a flat wash, a graduated wash or a variegated blend for this exercise, the choice is yours. After laying down your wash, watch closely as the paint starts to dry. There's a specific moment just before the sheen fades, this is your cue. Sprinkle your salt over the moist paint and observe. If the surface was too wet before you applied the salt, the crystals may get lost. If the wash becomes too dry when you apply salt, it may not melt with watercolor to create the textures we after. If you want to see how I use salt in my work, please check out my Lake Tahoe video or the Snow in Sierra tutorial. In these lessons, I use salt to mimic the presence of snow on snow banks and the falling snow. Now let's add a twist to our experiments. This time, we'll use rubbing alcohol on wet washes for unusual effects. I've chosen a vibrant duo for this example, Viridian and Quinacridone Rose. I like how these colors buzz with energy when they combined. Feel free to pick any colors you like for this example. After applying a wash to your watercolor paper, it's time for the fun part. Grab your rubbing alcohol, a pipette or even a thin brush and start dropping alcohol onto the wet paint. Watch as the colors spread, creating mesmerizing blooms where the alcohol touches the paper. Experiment and play with the placement and amount of alcohol drops. Imagine the possibilities, starry nights, frothy seas, or abstract landscapes. Where can you see the technique lighting up your artwork? Exploring the balance between control technique and the joy of spontaneous effects can truly enrich your creativity. Let's create unique abstract textures with everyday items from your kitchen and homes. While it's important to approach these methods with moderation to avoid a gimmicky look, they can infuse your paintings with an expressive dynamic quality when used thoughtfully. Watercolor with its fluid nature is perfectly suited for experimenting with the plastic wrap technique. This method can dramatically transform your watercolor washes and help suggest natural elements like rocks, dense woodlands, or even intricate patterns of ice. Here is what you need to do. Begin with the wet wash of your chosen colors, applying them generously to your paper. While the wash is still wet, lay plastic wrap over it. The key is not to flatten it completely, but to let it crinkle and fold, creating interesting patterns. Now the hardest part is waiting. It's important to let the paint and plastic wrap to sit undisturbed until completely dry. Paint needs time to settle into the folds of the plastic, creating captivating textures. Next, we are experimenting with the bubble wrap, a twist on creating another fun texture. Apply your watercolors with the wet on wet technique, then gently place bubble wrap over the surface. Add small weights on top to ensure those unique bubble textures press nicely into the paint. 
The trick here is letting it dry completely for the full effect. But we are not stopping here. Watch closely as we explore with aluminum foil and parchment paper. After laying these materials on the wet washes, add slight weights over them too. This step will help transfer the intricate textures of these materials onto your watercolors. Each item interacts differently with the paint, offering a variety of effects to play with in your paintings. Then carefully remove the materials once the washes are dry to unveil the intricate patterns formed beneath. Stay tuned to see how each created its own unique pattern in a little bit. are hopefully dry and we are ready to unveil the textures beneath. I hope you are as excited as I am to see the outcomes of our experiments. Let's carefully remove the cling wrap, bubble wrap, aluminum foil and parchment paper revealing the unique impressions they've left on our watercolor washes. Let's take a closer look at what we've created. Okay friends, as we've seen, the world of watercolor offers endless ways for creativity, even with the simplest items from around the house. But we are not done yet, there is so much more to explore. Here I am showing you how to use a wax resist. Can you see how it repels the paint, leaving the areas of white in places I've applied it? Later I'll show you how to use fluid gum to preserve lighter areas in your work. This is a piece of sea sponge, you can find them in many art stores here in the US. I simply dab it onto a pre-mixed wet paint and then imprint it onto my paper. You can imprint any objects you may have available just to see how imprinting works. Are you ready to get a little messy and have some fun? Well, go ahead and load your used toothbrush with a wet watercolor, then splatter this paint to get finer effects. Then load any round brush with the paint and flick the brush against your pointing finger and see the variety of splatters you've created. Continue by squeezing your loaded brush on the paper, grab a drinking straw and blow on these paint blobs and see how this technique creates expressive abstract shapes. I proceeded with using the granulating medium to see if it helps showcase the granulating effect. Personally, I didn't see much difference and I just used my trusty ultramarine blue and burnt umber to show you how these colors granulate naturally. While the surface is still wet, I see that this is a perfect moment to show you how you can scrape the wet paint using a palette knife, sharp object or even your nails. This technique is also called scraffito, meaning to scratch. This technique helps to suggest grasses, bring out highlights or suggest trees in your paintings. To wrap up our session, let's circle back to the technique of layering and glazing that we introduced at the beginning. 
Here I'm showing you how applying the same color on top creates a darker value of the same color. And when I apply different colors on top, these layers change the resulting color. This is just a small example of how you do glazing in watercolors. The important thing to remember here is when you glazing or layering, you need to make sure your previous colors are fully dry. Here I'm using a ruling pen to apply thin layers of masking gum. This technique helps preserve highlights and light areas in watercolor painting. And now look, I made this brush myself. I use it to apply abstract dots of masking gum or paint, often to suggest pebbles or sunlight glistening on the water's surface. The feather you may use as a felt pen or create organic strokes with it. I may show you how you can imprint the feather in the future. The key will be to remove the oils from the feather with a soap so it absorbs watercolor readily before imprinting it. Wow, this video flew by very fast, didn't it? I just want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to all of you for joining me today. Your support means so much to me, and honestly, it's what keeps these tutorials coming. If you've enjoyed exploring these techniques and are curious to dive even deeper, I've got something special for you. Check out my playlist Watercolor Basics for all the foundational skills and watercolor stories for more personal experience. Thank you again for painting along with me, for all your likes, shares, and sweet comments. I can't wait to see what you've created with today's techniques. <laughs> Until next time, keep creating and enjoy your exploration of this amazing medium. I'll see you in the next video, sending you all love and peace.